So a little while ago we built this beast, a solid metal Thor hammer filled to the brim with molten lead then welded shut. And when we put it to the test it was a destructive force to be reckoned with. The only problem being for mortal men is just too damned heavy to lift properly, let alone swing it around. That's why I've built this. It may look a bit like a proper replica, but it's not. It's designed and built to be a real weapon straight from the Marvel films. Apart from the decorative finish, it's constructed from 100% fiberglass, meaning although it's a really satisfying manly weight, you can still do this with it. And if you followed my Captain America shield build that was also made from quite thin fiberglass, wow. this should be tough. Really tough. In fact, because the head is anywhere between 5 and 9 inches, depending on the face, it should also be virtually bulletproof too. Well, that's enough slobber. Let's see how it was made. Brain food. Random stimulation for the brain. The first thing we're going to do is build the mold and for that I'm going to use some cheap 6 inch melamine chipboard from the hardware store. Then we can cut this into 4 equal lengths to form the top, bottom and sides. The sides and bottom can be glued and screwed together to form the basic shape of the mold. Next we need some 45 degree fillet strips so I set the circular saw to 45 degrees and cut the timber down both ways and it's job done. While I'm at it, I'll stick those strips into the base with some silicon sealant and wipe off the excess. The two end caps are next, and when they're cut, they'll fit onto the end like this. The last fillet strips to cut in shape are the ends of the hammer, and for that we need to cut a 60 degree angle. So, ignoring health and safety, I took my circular saw off its stops and forced a 60 degree cut out of it. This really is the only tricky cut to make, and as I have no table saw, I just had to do it this way. With that done, I can run down the other side at a much more sensible 30 degree angle and that leaves us with these sharp looking right angles. Once cut, they fit in and are silicon to the base only, not the sides. More 60 degree fillets can then be cut and siliconed again to the sides, not the ends. We now have this and everything is glued or silicon except the ends, which would simply fall off if they weren't screwed on. I accidentally lost the footage of making the top, but if I freeze frame it has a large hole in it and fillet strips that mirror the bottom and slot into the side fillet. Don't worry, it'll all be obvious later and the whole thing now splits down into a top, two sides and the base model. To stop any leaking resin gluing the mould shut, we're going to put a thin layer of silicon sealant across any exposed chipboard end grain. This also fills any imperfections. Once dry, we can screw it back together again. Now we're almost ready to cast the hammerhead and so I can get a good release and I can use the mould again I'm going to rub wax into all the surfaces thinly and pack it into any large cracks. The handle is taken care of with a really cheap set of fiberglass handled post diggers. Luckily these handles are 32mm which is just about perfect. So I cut off a nice length and this for my first practice run at fiberglassing. After sealing off the end with duct tape to stop leaks I can do my first resin mix. And this is a cheap polyester resin which I'll mix up at anywhere between 1-4% to of catalyst. It's nice and warm so 1%. With that mixed thoroughly, I can start to add my chopped fiberglass strand, basically just as much as I can and still have it at a stage where you can mix it and it's workable. If you've ever seen a Bondo type fiberglass car filler, that's what we're making. In fact, you could probably use that instead at a push. With the fiberglass rammed home and then topped up fully, we can let that cure. And when the mixing jug could be cleaned like this, the handle will be ready. So I'll clean off any drips and put it to one side. Things are looking good, it already feels as strong as chuff. With another high fibre mix now done, we can smash that into the mould and work it into all the corners. Here I'm using a blunt KFC fork to pop out any nasty air bubbles and this makes it as solid as possible. We now have roughly an inch of fiberglass in the mould so we can lightly position the handle right in the centre of the hammer head. Some offcuts of timber and a miniature level will make sure everything is upright and correct. I've now let this fully harden and cure so we can keep building up the levels from now on at about an inch at a time. I'm doing it in stages or layers because fiberglass cures with an exothermic reaction meaning it creates heat. So if we were to put too much fiberglass in at one go it will get so hot as to damage the mould and the project. 
Now that we're almost to the top, in goes the top part of the mold. And by pushing in the last of the mix into all the nooks and crannies first, we should get some reasonably crisp edges where they're needed. Finishing the very top of the hammer is just a matter of being patient and eyeballing it. Time spent here means it should be finger licking good when it's done. Well, it's time for the big reveal, so out come the screws, we'll gently pop it free from the mould, and there you go. She needs a bit of spit and polish, but not too bad. To get everything looking as it should, I'm going in like Flynn with 40 to 60 grade grit paper. Now, whenever you sand anything, let alone glass fibre, you need a good quality breathing mask, preferably some disposable paper overalls, and the wind blowing away from you and towards your neighbours. Remember, they love breathing this crap, you don't. Any angles that were too fiddly to make in the mould earlier can now be sanded into place. Things are now starting to look half decent. Any last imperfections get a very thin layer of standard car filler light bondo, and after drying and sanded with 400 grit, we'll tackle the handles. As it turns out, some solvent weld pipe fits nice and snug right over the fiberglass handles. Bonus. Chop, chop, choppity chop, bosh. Here I've got a really cheap roll of 20mm fake leather, so using this as a spacer I can plan out the positioning of all the rings which have now been sanded a bit round. Then by using an off cut of pipe I can make sure everything is nice and square. For the pommel I cut the appropriate shape then epoxy that into position too. The spare room left in the pommel can now be filled with more bondo and this allows us to fit a nut and bolt that we can fix the leather strap to last of all. When cured, a good firm twist of the bolt snaps it loose and we can finish the top. Everything now gets a quick tickle with some 400 grade grip paper. To prime it up I'm using an automotive plastic primer, but I reckon pretty much any primer would do. Once it was all primed up, some hidden pores and pits could be seen, so one last coat of thin bondo will finish these off, and a quick reprime confirms a nice smooth look. So now it's on with the final coat of paint, in this case a nice cheap off the shelf spray paint for car wheels. The disc to the front face of the hammer was a spare acrylic off cut with some runes etched in by a Dremel and after a quick prime and spray that was bonded with silicon. The faint leather straps can now be cut and super glued into position and any rough joints can be touched up with a matching colour a little bit later on. Because it just looks slightly too new I used some black acrylic wash just to knock off some of the overly shininess I didn't like and finally it just needs the handle strap. This is an off cut of fake leather belt that I had left over from my Captain America shield project. So it's in with a bolt on washer and then we'll just tighten it down to finish off me on there. And there you go, done. A solid fiberglass thoughts hammer that steps out of the toy box and into the armory. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that build and why not subscribe to see me testing it to destruction very soon. Please smash the like, share and subscribe button. See you next time. Thanks for watching.